All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. So I got two videos for you guys today. Today, I'm going to talk about a couple, couple strong topics because first of all, DC just, as far as I can tell, said that he's going to fight John Jones if he beats Stipe. I'll tell you exactly where he said that because you're going to search all around the internet and you're not going to find it. You're going to need someone like me to translate it for you. But I'm going to play the clip and then I'll translate it because it's absolutely obvious to anyone who is experienced in business and negotiating, okay? Like, because he just outright just said it as far as I'm concerned. Then I'm going to talk about uh, Roy Jones and Mike Tyson getting postponed, which is code for canceled. And I'll explain why I believe that is the case. Uh, also business. OK, so uh, before I do that, if you like the channel, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your friends, tell your friends, comment, like, etc. Re-trigger the algorithm because I made some rookie mistakes on YouTube and uh, mistakes I won't repeat. Let's just say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, YouTube. I'm sorry, never again. Anyway, so uh, yeah, this channel is gonna be the biggest channel there is, certainly in mixed martial arts, and when I expand to other topics, maybe over there too. But for now, we are small time, trying to grow, so help that process if you like the channel. Anyway, so let's talk about Daniel Cormier, because Daniel, directly, as I have, how many times? How many times have I said that this is my dream? Daniel Cormier beats Stipe decisively, gets on the microphone, calls out John Jones, and that's his Swan song fight, he wins, he goes off into the sunset, it's the best narrative ever. That is my dream for Daniel Cormier. And he did an interview where, if you listen to it, he says, I'm not going to fight again. And if you listen to it through the ears of a person who negotiates professionally, he said, I'm willing to fight for the right price, okay? So, let's play that clip for you right now. I believe it's the final walk that I'll ever make. You know, I, I've, I've made a lot of sacrifices, Paulie. You know, with, with everything going on in the world today, I don't even get to stay at home with my pregnant wife and my two children. You know, I'm living in a house with my training partners. That way we can get together, train, get tested together, and not run the risk of anyone getting sick and, and getting my family sick. But with the world that we live in today and everything else that I've done in the sport, I feel like this is it for me because I don't know if I can make those sacrifices again. Okay, now... He said, I believe this is my final fight. Look at what I'm sacrificing, etc." Okay, so let me tell you what that sounds like to a person, again, who negotiates contracts and does deals all day long. This is all I do, okay? When a person says something like that, what they are saying is, I am open to an offer, okay? He said, I believe this is my final fight, okay? If he's done after this, he will say, this is my final fight. He will talk in decisive language, okay? When he says, I believe this is my final fight, and then he gives you a list of reasons why it should be his final fight, as in, my wife is seven months pregnant, I'm living with my training partners through all this chaos that's going on in the world. That's what I'm dealing, I am doing that. I'm sacrificing my family in order to fight. And I don't know if I can do that again, man. I just, I think this is it. I believe this is my final fight, okay? So what he's actually saying is, listen, man, in order for me to make these sacrifices again, I mean, look, at I'm going to have a brand new kid. In order for me to sacrifice those months with my new baby, that's going to cost. You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay for me to do that. Okay? That is business language. Daniel Cormier, say what you want about him as, as a man, as a fighter, whatever. The guy is a businessman. He's made too much money for you to look at him any other way. Okay? Just being good at mixed martial arts is... That doesn't make you rich, okay? That doesn't make you generational money. Now, I don't know exactly what DC's money is, but I know he's got dough. And he got dough by being able to navigate the, the, the business landscape of the UFC. Now, he's also one of these guys who has one of these magic relationships with, with Dana White, okay? So he announces, right? Bottom line is he, is he has done whatever Dana has ever asked him to do, and he's also simultaneously negotiated excellent contracts for himself. And he's one of those, he's a rare... Man, he might even be a unicorn where he's one of those guys that's done that without ever holding out and making it nasty publicly ever. And you know, DC is Dana's boy. Like he's, he is a golden child with, with Dana. And he's also backed it up with the MMA and he's backed it up by being a draw. Whether people loved him or hated him, people wanted to watch him fight. So he is, I mean, he's a unicorn, man. He really genuinely is. And he never did anything messed up. I mean, John Jones could have been the golden boy, but... Man, I was going back over John Jones's career in my mind the other day. Like, like last night when I talked about uh, when I talked about the the DC John Jones thing, and I was like, uh, you know, and I was talking about how John Jones pissed hot after their second fight. And I'm thinking about, I like, it is. I, I mean, 
Do you know how good you would have to be in order to get away with the shit that John Jones has gotten away with and still be fighting? It's unreal. Like, I mean, like, seriously, like, like, I'm not just talking about like, you know, oh, you know, he's wild. I'm not just like, there are lots of wild guys. There has never been anyone in the history of the sport that has gotten in so much trouble and continued to just be like a belt holding respected fighter. He's that good. Like, that's, that's what's so crazy. Like, think, so first incident. I mean, I'm not going to do this in perfect chronological order because I'm just doing it off the top of my head on a tangent. But like, you know, he gets in the DUI car accident, hits a pregnant woman, flees the scene. They find, you know, drug paraphernalia, whatever in his car. That's a big deal, right? Gets suspended. He pisses hot for juice, right? He gets suspended. He comes back after pissing hot from juice, fights DC, and then pisses hot for juice for that fight, okay? Like, think about that. Like, and in the process, derails what would have been uh, the most storybook career ever. But like, so you got, I mean, like, dude, he, how many times, honestly, how many times has he pissed hot? Now, I will say that I have a theory about that. And I think that what happened was when he was suspended from that DUI, that he started powerlifting, he started doing juice, he wasn't thinking long term, he didn't do a lot of research on, on how long that stuff was going to stay in your system. That is the story I will tell myself if I want to say that John Jones was not outright cheating throughout his career. The other answer is maybe he was just cheating throughout his career. But, you know, he, he gets another DUI. I, I know I'm forgetting something. I know there's something else I'm forgetting. But, like, the number of juice pops he's had, the number of DUIs he's had, the, the like, it's just, it's nuts, man. It is really crazy. But it's a testament to how good he is. Anyway, bottom line is, with DC, with DC, that is clear language. He is saying that if I beat... And here's the other thing. He also can't say anything about fighting John Jones after this because you can't be there as a fighter. You can't, like... You can't put yourself in that position and be like, you know, well, after I knock out Stipe, the best heavyweight of all time, I'm going to fight this other guy. You can't be thinking about that. That's the beauty of the sport. You need to be in that moment and you need to be performing at your absolute top level to survive the encounter. You have, the, you have literally the most dangerous heavyweight fighter in the world trying to knock you unconscious in the octagon. Okay, You can't be thinking about other things. You can't be thinking about who you're going to fight next. You have one thing to think about. That's it. One thing. Okay. And, and I'm going to be honest. I think it's possible, possible that in the first fight, the reason why DC was able to do that so well. And the reason why he came out on top is because at the time, Stipe represented beating John Jones. Okay. That's my, that is my belief, at least a, a hypothesis. Because John Jones said outright he wouldn't fight Stipe. John Jones is suspended. He's not in the game anymore. So how does John, how does DC beat John Jones? He does the thing that John Jones said he wouldn't even try to do, and he is successful. I mean, that's that's I, I absolutely believe that there's a huge component of that. He's a competitor, man. He's a competitor, he's a killing machine. He has competed his whole life. That's what he lives to do. So you think that that's not part of it? It was. And then the second fight, it's a different thing. He's defending against Stipe. You know, maybe he's thinking about other things, you know, what's after this or like, I mean, he's, there's just, he doesn't have, it's not the same thing. Defending against a guy who you already beat is not the same as beating your arch nemesis by beating this other guy who is the greatest heavyweight of all time. Different thing. Um, so yeah, my, my hypothesis now after him using that language is pretty crystal clear that if he beats Stipe decisively, doesn't take a lot of punishment, then he's going to fight John Jones. Now he might not call him out on the mic. But Dana's going to throw, a, you know, he's going to back up a truck full of money to him. And, you know, DC's a businessman. He's about to live the rest of his life. You think he couldn't use another eight, 10, 12 million dollars? I bet he could, right? Like, you look at your life, you're like, geez, all right, well, I'm already set for life. Is there anything I want to buy for, you know, I don't know, say I net $6 million, $7 million that I wouldn't have had otherwise? Is there anything I want to buy? I don't know. What could I do with $6 million? Like, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Anyway, uh, now let's talk about Tyson and Roy Jones because that fight is not going to happen. I am sad to tell you guys. So here's the deal. Here's how I know it's not going to happen. So when they announced Roy Jones and Tyson, did anyone look into where that fight was going to take place? Was it, on, you know, it was on pay-per-view, right? Like it was just going to be a regular pay-per-view. No. They were doing it on a brand new social media app called Triller, which was going to be the new TikTok, right? So it's the new TikTok. It's... It's Triller. And uh, yeah, no, that, that the whole entire value of paying these guys tens of millions of dollars for this fight inevitably was to launch your product and launch your social media product. 
Okay, so the day that they announced it, right? The day that they announced it, I went on and I made a triller. Made an account, followed some people, made a couple posts, and got zero engagement, zero. Okay, so I was like a brand new adopter, obviously. You know, and I did all the things that you, you know, on TikTok, everybody knows I have 200,000 subscribers, and followers, not like I don't know what I'm doing. And I went on Triller and did all the same things and got, and I'm talking like no engagement, like no views, no nothing. Like I tagged, you know, I did it on, it was right before Fight Island. And I talked about like a fight that was going on on Fight Island. They had just announced that Roy Jones and Mike Tyson are fighting on this, this app. So it's like, oh, this is gonna be a fighter app. So I went and made an account. <laughs> UFC follows me on Triller though. How you like them apples? How you like them apples? I tried to like reach out to them. Let's see if they've uh, responded. I haven't even gone back there because it's such uh, such an, an, an unused site. But bottom line is, no engagement. I mean, like you, you know, you have to like, uh, you know, like you, you have to see some kind of engagement when you get started, or like, I don't know, like whether or not. Bottom line is this, dude. Like, bottom line is this: on the other platforms, you do something. There's some kind of algorithm that's going to make sure that people see it, right? Clearly, that does not exist on this one. Like, they missed the boat. Whether you need bots or you need. I don't know, you need something to give some kind of positive feedback to people when they first get on there. Because otherwise you just go on, you know, you make a, you make a, you make a post, you see no feedback whatsoever and it fails. Like you're not gonna go back to it, which is exactly what happened. I went back there two, three times, the end. So Triller did not see the adoption that they were hoping for. And now they're like, Jesus, we're just gonna flush $40 million down or whatever, 20, 30, 40 million dollars down the drain for no reason. And uh, you know, people don't, people have any, like this had no uptick. Like we had almost no uptick. We announced it and we had almost no uptick. We were expecting to gain 400,000 followers that day and we got like 10,000. This is not gonna work, okay? So the contract is with Triller. The contract with Triller ain't gonna work in its current state. Thus, the economics don't work. Thus, the fight's over. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna work. Like they're gonna, they're gonna cancel it, guaranteed. Or at the very least, some other promoter will take it on or like the, they're not gonna do it in its current state, okay? That just is what it is. And I don't really have much more to say about that, except that they're gonna have to figure something else out because it fell on its face the way that they, uh, you know, in, in it's what they were trying to do. So anyway, if you like the channel, subscribe and ring the bell. I got another con another video coming though. And this one is going to be about Khabib and Connor and uh, what Khabib has left because uh, there's a possibility that fight does not happen, but obviously it's in Khabib's hands, but I'll talk about that. So if you like the channel, subscribe, ring the bell, peace.